the brighter day. Brought to you by Cheer, new blue Cheer. The only suds with the blue magic whitener. And Shasta, the hot cream shampoo. Isn't that just like a 10-year-old? She insists on biking in a brand new dress and comes home covered with mud. You try not to fuss, but still. You have to wash it. So you wash it in cheer. Because cheer is different. It's the only one with the blue magic whitener that actually brightens clothes. And white things like shirts? Cheer gets them really white. So clean and white you don't need bluing. And except for problem stains, no bleach. You can actually see Cheer's Blue Magic Whitener wash in whiteness. So your girl wears her favorite dress for gardening, too. And when you have to wash it, you wash it in Cheer. Try it. Cheer gets clothes so clean, so white, you don't need bluing or bleach. New Blue Cheer, the only suds with that Blue Magic Whitener. Patty Dennis Hamilton is busy as usual this morning attending to the office business of her doctor husband while he's at the hospital on a case. These office hours have become precious to her because soon she'll have to relinquish this job when the baby comes. She's on the phone to the hospital with a message when she's suddenly aware of an unexpected visitor in the doorway. Mrs. Washburn. Good morning, Patty. Please sit down. I'll be right with you. I'm just finishing this call to the hospital. Well, oh. Oh, all right. Well, thank you very much for giving Dr. Hamilton my message. <laughs> yes, I will. Bye. Well, now. Oh, won't you sit down, Mrs. Washburn? It won't be necessary. I'm not staying more than a moment. Oh, I do hope Judy's all right. Yes, I, I think she'll be in excellent hands. Oh, I, I was just leaving a reminder for Randy to go straight from the hospital to your house. The nurse says he's already on his way to see Judy. Well, Patty, I'm sorry I didn't get here sooner. You might have reached him in time. Because he doesn't need to come and see Judy anymore. I've made other arrangements. I'll, uh, I'll just pay my bill now for the two visits he's already made. I, I don't understand. Randy just told me this morning that Judy's coming along very well. If she'll just stay in bed, it's, it's nothing more serious than a bad cold. It's all right, Patty. Why make it more difficult? I've come here to pay you what I owe. I was successful in reaching Dr. Fletcher, and I've turned the case over to him. Mrs. Washburn, do you feel that Randy's been neglecting Judy? I didn't say he had. Well, then what is it? Please feel free to tell me. Patty, I'm a woman of strong decisions. Other people may just drift along, but I don't. And I've simply made up my mind. After that disgraceful business at Willard House and that disreputable Mr. Ralston and his gang, well, I'm sorry to say, Patty, that those who allowed themselves to be employed by him in, in one way or another, well, I can't with any conscience allow any member of my family to be treated by them. Oh, no, Mrs. Washburn. I know you no doubt think that I'm narrow-minded, but that's just how I feel. Mrs. Washburn, up until very recently, before my father exposed Mr. Ralston, everyone in this town thought very highly of him. I respect you for it, Patty. Every good wife should defend her husband whenever possible. But just let me pay what I owe. I've got to get back to Judy. Well, Mrs. Washburn, under the circumstances, I'm sure Dr. Hamilton will consider the account closed. He wouldn't want you to pay for the two visits he's made, feeling as you do. Well, that's no way to do business. Well, that's our way, Mrs. Washburn. And now it's settled. Well, I... I guess I can't argue about it. I'm sorry, Patty, because I've always had great respect for you and your family. But that's just the way Mr. Washburn and I feel. And if you must know it, I strongly suspect that there are going to be a lot of other folks who feel just the same way when their loved ones need medical attention. Goodbye, Patty. Goodbye, Mrs. Washburn. Hello, Franny. Could I speak to Papa, please? 
Oh, well, no, no, don't, don't bother him at the church. No, it's all right. I'll, I'll, I'll get him later. Bye. Oh, Randy. What's the matter, Patty? Nothing, darling, nothing. Uh, did you get the uh, messages I left for you at the hospital? Yes, dear, I... I did. Patty. Hmm? You don't have to pretend with me. I just come from the Washburn home and had the rather unique experience of being turned away. They said Mrs. Washburn would be in later to explain. Yes, she just left. It's a wonder you didn't run into her. Oh, I spotted her from the car, hiking up the street, keeping her face turned toward the store windows for fear I might stop and speak to her. Oh, Randy. Sweetheart, I... I can't let you go on working here any longer and be annoyed by people like Mrs. Washburn. Remember, we've got the baby to think of. Oh, Randy, I've got to be here. And ride through this storm with you. Patty, my dearest. I must be wise and caring for you. Now, you must do as I say this time, because this may be more of a storm than even I anticipate. Isn't that just like a two-year-old? You leave him to answer that phone, and there's the gravy all over the tablecloth. He's your boy. But still, you have to wash it. So you wash it in cheer, because cheer is different. It's the only one with the blue magic whitener that gets white things like tablecloths really white. So clean and white, you don't need bluing. And except for problem stains, no bleach. You can actually see Cheers Blue Magic Whitener wash in whiteness and even brighten colors. So the little fella gets his play clothes dirty, too. And when you have to wash it, you wash it in Cheer. It's true. Cheer gets clothes so clean, so white, you don't need bluing or bleach. New Blue Cheer. The only suds with that... Blue Magic Whitener. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king, which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him which owed him ten thousand talents. But for as much as he had not to pay, his lord commanded him to be sold, his wife and children, all that he had in payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I'll pay thee all. And the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him the debt. The same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him a hundred pence. He laid hands on him, took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I'll pay thee all. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry and came and told unto their Lord all that was done. And his Lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, O oh, thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all thy debt, because thou desirest. Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was wroth, and delivered him to the tormentors, till he should pay all that was due unto him. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not every one his brother, their trespasses. Dad? Oh, hi, Greeley. Am I disturbing you? Aunt Emily said uh, she wanted to see me. No. No, I... Just collecting a few thoughts for my sermon on Sunday from St. Matthew's Gospel. Son? It seems to me 
All too many people in this town are of a mind not to forgive his brother their trespasses. Mm. And they could and should. I've been down to see the Garretts. They're really in a bad way, Grayling, suffering from the after effects of Mr. Ralston in this town. People like the Thompsons, others like Sally Eldridge, actually setting themselves up as judges, whether they realize it or not. And the Garrett Bakery isn't being patronized. I know it. I go by there every noontime. Used to be a big crowd going in there. Grayling, it's, it's an alarming situation. I know that people were shocked and resentful that they'd been deceived by the smile, smiling, smooth Ralston. Yeah, but he's gone now. Yes. I've never seen such a glaring example of the evil and corruption of one man living on after him. Really? You've got to help me. How? I want you to advise me what to say when I go and see Joe Sharkwell. What are you going to go and see him for? Crystal Carpenter came to see me. She's convinced that Sharkwell is responsible for Ralston's death. Well, it could be. And she tells me that he's now trying to force her and Larry Knox into sticking with him and making Charlie Garrett a scapegoat. Here's how you can help me, son. You mean with Sharkey? Yes. He mustn't have any inkling that Crystal Carpenter talked to me. She's a pretty helpless, desperate girl. To shield her, we must make him think that only you, a newspaper man, and Mike Corley, whom I'm convinced Sharkwell bribed, are my only two sources of information. And if you go with me, it'll lend weight to that impression. I see. Well, when do you want to tackle uh, Sharky? I guess preparing my sermon for Sunday will have to wait. I feel there's no time to lose. We'll go now, son. Right now. Free hair beauty. The modern swing is to Shasta for a hot cream shampoo. When lanolin enriched Shasta meets hot water, tiny cells explode into hot lanolin lather. First sudsing cleans but won't rob natural oils. With the second sudsing, Shasta's lanolin lather heats your own natural oils to give you a beautifying hot cream shampoo. Occasionally have a deep scalp treatment. After a vigorous massage, wrap head in a hot towel for two minutes before rinsing. Feels like a 350 hot cream treatment. Costs only nine cents. So to make your hair soft and shining bright with a truly carefree beauty, have a hot cream shampoo with Shasta. Brighter Day, written by John Haggard, has been brought to you by Cheer, New Blue Cheer, the only suds with the blue magic whitener, and Shasta, the hot cream shampoo billows into hot lanolin leather for lovelier hair. Lend a helping hand to a crippled child through Easter Seals. Help provide care and treatment. Send in your gift today to Crippled Children, care of your local post office.